1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial is 6, so infinity factorial should be infinity? That would make a lot of sense. And indeed, this product, treated as an infinite sequence, diverges to infinity. But you know I would not have made this video if there wasn't something interesting going on. Let's take the log of both sides, and assuming that we can, apply properties of logarithms to break up this log of an infinite product into an infinite sum of logarithms. This condensed summation notation looks so good, there just has to be a function that represents it. Enter the infamous Riemann zeta function. Now I don't see any logarithms in this sum, but we will after we take the derivative with respect to s. The derivative of 1 over n to the s, with respect to s, is minus 1 over n to the s times ln of n. Now substituting s equals 0 gives us the negative of our sum in question. So we can say that the natural log of infinity factorial is equal to the negative first derivative of the Riemann zeta function at 0. There's a bit of a caveat here. We're using the analytic continuation of the Riemann zeta function, which is an idea I've touched on in a previous video. Essentially, we're extending the domain of the Riemann zeta function to substitute in more values that don't normally make sense. Now, assuming that we actually can plug in zero doesn't actually get us any closer to computing this sum. Enter the Dirichlet eta function, which has a very nice relationship between it and the Riemann zeta function. Now we're talking about derivatives here, so on the left, let's take the derivative of the Dirichlet eta function, and on the right, we'll have to deal with this product rule, keeping in mind all of our rules for differentiating exponential functions. After that, plug in zero. Now, take its derivative, keeping in mind all of our rules for differentiating exponential functions, and now we can go ahead and plug in zero, which is what we were really interested in. And if we start to write out this sum, we get a very interesting pattern if we try to manipulate this with properties of logarithms again. Remember when we're subtracting logarithms, we can write it as a single logarithm of the first argument over the second argument, and when we're adding logarithms, we can write it as a single logarithm of the first argument times the second argument. This fancy product is called a Wallace product and is equal to pi over 2. The analytic continuation of the Riemann zeta function at s equals 0 is minus a half. Now we have everything we need. Just do a little bit of algebraic manipulation, some properties of logarithms, and we'll see that the derivative of the Riemann zeta function at 0 is equal to natural log the square root of 2 pi. And that was equal to the natural log of infinity factorial. Just cancel the lns on both sides. We're saying that infinity factorial is equal to the square root of 2 pi. If you can get behind this idea of analytic continuation, I can promise you're really going to like this result. It totally blew my mind. Click the video on the screen, and I'll see you in that one.